friends good morning so today uh, we are going to see about the engineering mathematics subject uh, for your gate preparation okay i am uh, dr roja meedi from snsc department taking the class right the first topic is linear algebra uh, so the linear algebra yes uh, you have studied in uh, first semester itself right matrices so now matrices and system of linear equation uh, linear equations etc is included in this uh, topic okay so in our uh, in your ma max one subject you have studied about the eigen values eigen vectors and properties of eigen values halley hamilton theorem okay so this is the just recalling the same topic for your uh, preparation okay the, these are all the basic concepts uh, belongs to this uh, linear algebra so uh, you have to concentrate all the topics okay so first matrix the definition of matrix is an just an arrangement of uh, is an arrangement right yeah matrix is an rectangular array of numbers uh, uh, that are real or complex uh, the horizontal lines of numbers are called rows and the vertical lines are called columns uh, if a is a matrix of m rows and n columns then it is denoted by a equal to the matrix a i j m by n this a i j are called the elements of a okay row matrix a matrix having only one row is called a row matrix column matrix matrix having only one column is called a column matrix and rectangular matrix is yes, uh, is called a rectangular matrix when m not equal to n that is number of rows is different from number of columns okay so generally we are studied about the uh, square matrix only that is 3 by 3 matrix 2 by 2 matrix okay so uh, if number of rows not equal to number of columns then the matrix is said to be rectangular matrix then square matrix if the number of rows equal to number of columns is called square matrix and null matrix all the elements are zero principal diagonal the main diagonal are a leading diagonal okay in a square matrix the line joining the first element of the first row to the last element of the last row is called the principal diagonal and diagonal matrix so in a square matrix the uh, contains only the diagonal elements then the matrix is said to be a diagonal matrix okay pa? then if a equal to diagonal element diagonal matrix means then a power n if it becomes a, 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 the power of the diagonal element okay for example if a is the matrix having the number 100020003 then a cube equal to uh, 1 cube 0 0 0 2 cube 0 0 0 3 cube okay just like that um then upper triangular the triangular matrix being uh, the elements uh, either in in the lower position right in the position uh, this l or in the upper l this kind of a matrix is called a triangular matrix okay ma so this is an example so square matrix is said to be an upper triangular if a i j equal to zero whenever i is greater than j similarly a i j equal to zero whenever i less than j then it is called a lower triangular matrix then triangular matrix is a, it, if it is either upper or lower then that matrix is said to be a triangular matrix now scalar matrix scalar matrix means the diagonal matrix all elements in the principal diagonal are equal then the matrix is said to be a scalar matrix okay the scalar matrix is also called a diagonal matrix and a diagonal matrix means the matrix which contains elements only in the diagonal so in this case also the diagonal elements but or if all the elements are same number then the matrix is said to be a scalar matrix also okay pa then identity matrix you know that for 2 by 2 the matrix is 1001 and for 3 by 3 100010001 okay whether ppt is visible hello hello students hello ma hey answer anyone pa slide is visible okay right then okay now next uh, this identity matrix already we have seen it equality of matrices so 
So two matrix is said to be equal. When is said to be equal, A and B are of same size and the corresponding elements are equal. Okay. If A i j equal to B i j, then the elements are said to be equal then two matrices are said to be equal. Now you know that addition of two matrices. So we can add two matrices, the corresponding elements, we can add it. So AIJ plus BIG, right? Then A plus B equal to B plus A. So the addition of two matrices is uh, commutative and it is also associative. That is A plus B plus C equal to A plus B plus C. Then additive identity is a null matrix. Null matrix is called the additive identity then minus A is called the additive inverse of A. Okay, pa? so A plus minus A equal to minus A plus A equal to 0. Then if you multiply any scalar with the matrix, matrix um, K into A plus B, which is equal to KA plus KB. Okay, these are all the basic concepts. Uh, then multiplication of two matrices. So we know that how to multiply the matrices A and B. So uh, considering first row, first column, then first row, second column, uh, like that. Okay. So if the product A B exists, then it is not, not necessary that the product B A will also exist. Is it clear? So how uh, how we can uh, multiply two matrices? The if the number of column in the first matrix and the number of row in the second matrix are equal okay then only we can able to multiply two matrices so the product a b exists then not necessary to uh, that b a is also exists okay then matrix multiplication is not commutative even if a b and b a exist then need not be equal. Okay, this is not uh, true for all matrices. For some matrices, A, B equal to B, A. But in general, A, B is not equal to B, A. So, ma ma matrix multiplication is associative, right? A into B, C equal to A, B into C. And A, B a square matrix, then A squared equal to A into A. Okay, then uh, A power M, M power N equal to A power M N. Then A power M into A power N is A power M plus N. Now A into B plus C equal to AB plus AC. This is a distributive law. Okay. So A, A is a matrix of order M by N. Then A I power N equal to I power M A equal to A. Okay. This I is called the multiplicative identity. Then trace of a matrix. So uh, you just remember the word trace. Trace means the sum of the principal diagonal elements. Okay, but trace of a matrix means the sum of the principal diagonal elements. Now, uh, the property of a trace, trace of Ka, K into trace A, then trace of A plus B equal to trace A plus trace B, etc. Okay, so then next transpose of a matrix. So transpose means we can exchange rows and columns. So um, uh, uh, now A transpose the whole transpose equal to A and A plus R minus B the transpose equal to A transpose plus B transpose. Similarly A minus B the whole transpose equal to A transpose minus B transpose. Okay. Then A B the whole transpose equal to B transpose A transpose. K A the whole transpose equal to K into A transpose where K is some scalar. Then a determinant. So now the determinant of a matrix is a unique number. Okay. So for example, this matrix A1, B1, A2, B2, the determinant is A1, B, A1 into B2, multiple the main diagonal element, product of main diagonal elements minus the product of the other diagonal elements. Okay, for two by two matrix. So it is denoted by A1, B1 determinant of a1 b1 a2 b2 okay then minor minor if aij is an element which is in i row and jth column of a square matrix a then the determinant of the matrix obtained by deleting the i row and jth column of a is called the minor so minor uh, uh, leaving the corresponding row and the corresponding column the remaining element the value of the determinant of the remaining elements is called the minor of that element okay pa so this is called minor. Then cofactor. Cofactor is the uh, uh, AIJ is an element which is in the ith and jth column of a square matrix A. Then the product of minus 1 power I plus J. Um, and MIJ is called the cofactor of AIJ. It is denoted by capital AIJ. Okay. So then the determinant of a square matrix is equal to the 
sum of the products of elements of row or column with their corresponding cofactors. Okay, so this is determinant of a three by three matrix. I think uh, you all well known to find how to find the determinant of matrices. So determinant of matrices is first we put uh, this plus um, yeah, uh, upon the on the first row we put a plus minus plus right then plus a1 into the determinant the minor of a1 then minus b1 into minor of b1 plus c1 into minor of c1 so if i adding we get the determinant value okay then if rows and columns in a square matrix are interchanged then the value of the determinant determinant remains unaltered okay so that is determinant of a equal to determinant of a transpose then the determinant of a square matrix changes sign when any two rows and any two columns are interchanged okay then if two rows of a square matrix are identical or proportional then the value of the determinant is zero if all the elements of a row of a square matrix are multiplied by a number k then the determinant of the resulting matrix is equal to k times the determinant of the um, yeah, original matrix. That is, if that is any common element in corresponding to row or corresponding to column, we can take the constant outside. Other than literal, other than a meaning. Okay. Then, if each element in a row or column of a matrix is the sum of two terms, okay, then we can separate into two sum of two matrices. So, look at the example a1 plus x, a2, a3, b1 plus y, b2, b3 c1 plus z c2 c3 then this can be written as a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 plus x into a2 a3 y in y b2 b3 z c2 c3 okay pa? then next if the elements of a row of a matrix are ordered added with k times the corresponding elements if the uh, this value the determinant of the resulting matrix is unaltered. Okay. Then next point, the sum of the products of the elements of any row or column of a square matrix with the cofactor corresponding elements of any row is zero. Okay. Then if the elements of a square matrix are polynomial in X and two rows become identical, X equal to A, then X minus A is a factor of its determinant. Okay. If three rows are identical, then X minus A, the whole square is a factor. Then now, determinant of AB equal to determinant A into determinant B, which is equal to determinant BA. But if determinant AB equal to 0, then either determinant A equal to 0 or determinant B equal to 0. So the determinant of a skew symmetric matrix of order, all order is 0. Okay. The unit matrix is 1. At the, is, uh, this point is very important. A square matrix A is said to be singular, non-singular. Okay. So, based on the determinant value, the given square matrix is said to be singular if the determinant value equal to 0. Okay. Similarly, non-singular not equal to 0. So, that the value of the determinant is used to uh, uh, is used to check whether the given matrix is singular or non-singular. Similarly, it is used to check consistency or inconsistency of a matrix. Okay, so in, uh, in, in the next chapter, the system of linear equations, uh, we are going to check whether the given system of equations are consistent or inconsistent. Okay, for those the uh, topic also, we are going to find the determinant value. If the determinant value equal to zero means the system is um, inconsistent and not equal to zero means the system is consistent. Okay, then determinant of k a equal to k power n into determinant a order of a square matrix then inverse of a matrix so the inverse of a matrix so in the in plus two itself we are studying how to find the inverse first we are finding the determinant value then uh, if if it is non-singular that is determinant value not equal to zero then only we can able to find the inverse of a matrix okay then you have to find the adjoint of a matrix then uh, inverse of a square matrix is said to be uh, a, B, uh, we find the matrix B such that A, B equal to B, A equal to I. Okay. Then, yeah, these are all the properties of inverse of a matrix. Right, pa? So, if uh, A is an invertible matrix, then its inverse is denoted by A inverse. That implies A into A inverse equal to A inverse into A equal to I. A is invertible. Then, A inverse, the whole inverse equal to A. 
okay then a b the whole inverse this is also important a b the whole inverse equal to b inverse a inverse okay then for a non singular matrix a inverse equal to rga by determinant a this is the formula to find the a inverse okay keep in mind a inverse equal to 1 by determinant a into adjoint a okay pa adjoint a is nothing but the cofactor matrix the transpose of a cofactor matrix right ma so now determinant adjoint a b equal to adjoint a into adjoint adjoint b into adjoint a and these are all the properties of uh, uh, inverse of inverse matrix uh, properties based on inverse matrix okay now a if a equal to a 2 by 2 matrix then a b c d then a inverse equal to 1 by determinant a into adjoint a okay so for a 2 by 2 matrix the adjoint a is nothing but just interchange the uh, elements in the main diagonal right ma yes uh, we are having a and d in the uh, main diagonal but if just interchange the main diagonal elements and change the sign of the other diagonal elements okay so this is called the adjoint a for a 2 by 2 matrix is it clear so for 2 by 2 matrix the adjoint a is interchanging the main diagonal element and changing the sign in the other diagonal element so determinant a is we know that ad minus bc okay product of main diagonal minus product of other diagonal this is called the determinant okay so for um, this diagonal matrix if the matrix a is diagonal then directly you can write it as a inverse as 1 by a 1 by b 1 by c okay just reciprocal the diagonal element pick it the diagonal matrix uh, the inverse of a diagonal matrix okay papa then the inverse of a ma symmetric matrix is symmetric symmetric means what uh, the elements uh, uh, on the upper diagonal and lower diagonal are each same okay so if the aij equal to aji then the matrix is to be symmetric okay the inverse of a diagonal matrix is a diagonal so the uh, diagonal matrix or the inverse kandupidichalam inverse of a diagonal matrix is also a diagonal matrix okay if a is singular then a transpose is also singular singular means what determinant a equal to 0 so if a is singular then a transpose is also singular a is non singular then a inverse into a transpose is non singular okay pa now uh, this uh, if determinant a equal to 0 then determinant of adjoint a also equal to 0 okay then if a is an orthogonal matrix then determinant a equal to plus or minus 1 okay number huchikonga then now uh, we can see some examples the determinant of the matrix this is the question asked in 2002 so what is the determinant of this matrix okay so our option is given as 100, 200, 1, 300. <clears throat> so in the, this is a diagonal a triangular matrix, right, ma? Lower triangular matrix. So it's a lower triangular matrix. The determinant of lower triangular matrix is equal to the product of its diagonal elements. Okay. Product of its diagonal elements. So, product of diagonal keep in mind for a triangular matrix, direct determinant A equal to product of the diagonal elements. So, the product of 1, 1, 1, 1, we get 1. So, determinant A equal to 1. Okay. Then, now look at this example. If uh, delta equal to 1A, B, C, 1, B, C, A, 1, C, A, B, then which of the following is a factor? Okay, they are asked to find the factor. <clears throat> factor means that then uh, whether a plus b, a minus b, a b c or a plus b plus c. Right. So for the given uh, matter, given determinant, okay, delta is a determinant. So for the given determinant, we have to apply uh, uh, some row operation. Okay, we have to simplify some row operation so for r1 uh, becomes r1 minus r2 then our first element will become 0 so first element is 0 then a minus b b minus c okay so uh, if we take a minus b as a common from the first row 
we are having 0, 1, um, minus C, right for A minus B minus C, we are, if you are taking common outside, then this A minus B is a factor. Yeah, because if A equal to B, then uh, the, this delta become 0. If A equal to B means so, then this A minus B is a factor. Okay. So do you understand how to find the factor? So apply some row operation to make the first element will become 0, right? A, A, 1, 1, uh, 0, okay. Then uh, you have to take, try to take the common element from A, 1, 2 and A, 1, 3, okay? So uh, if, uh, if uh, or otherwise, uh, uh, try to take uh, the element from A, 2, 1 and A, 2, 3, A, 1, 2, A, 1, a21 and A31, whatever may be, right? So make the first A11 equal to 0. Okay, try to make A11 equal to 0. Then try to take a common common term from either from first row or from first column. Okay, then that element is a factor. So the factor of this given mat determinant is A minus B. Okay, then next, if A equal to this matrix and adjoint A is given, Okay, here there is some uh, constant k is there. Then you they ask to find what is k. Okay, the options are given. Then how can we find given matrix A and their adjoint A? Okay, so now we know the property adjoint A equal to B transpose, where B is a cofactor matrix and all the elements of B are cofactors of elements of U. Okay, so adjoint A, already I informed adjoint A equal to the transpose of a cofactor matrix, okay. So, they are given A as a matrix, then first you have to find the cofactor of uh, A. So, particularly they ask you for the elements of K only, right. So, if you know the transpose, a being the position, you have to think, then find the cofactor element, right. So, the, the 4 K as A23, that is cofactor means minus 1 power I plus J, correct into m i j upper minus 1 power i plus j this is whole power 5 so 2 plus 3 minus 1 power odd number is plus 1 into the corresponding cofactor element of a so for the position k that is a 2 3 a 2 3 yes this is 5 so leaving the corresponding row and corresponding column we get 1 minus 2 0 5 okay transpose they transpose panic, you know, adjoint A into the, is the transpose panna no, panna no, cofactor matrix kereko. Okay, apa cofactor matrix or element 1 minus 2, 0, 5. So, minus of, the answer is minus 5. Okay, then next problem, if A, B, C are square matrices of the same order, then A, B, C, the whole inverse is equal to, already we studied, A, B, the whole inverse equal to B inverse, A inverse, correct? A, B, C, the whole inverse equal to C inverse, B inverse, A inverse is the right option. Okay, pa. Then, if A equal to this matrix, then this is some, if they are given some example, this is called a sub matrix. Okay, uh, uh, sub matrix means that any, any minor, any minor is called the sub matrix. Then the, uh, we are taking some submatrix. Mm, this is the problem based on for uh, rank. Huh? If I rank for the topic, we will take the example. But if we take the concept, we will take the concept. Submatrix Sabrina, it's a uh, minor of any element. Okay, for example, the minor of 7. Hmm? If the minor of 7 means uh, leaving this row and this column, then the minor of 7 is. 2, 1, 3, 1, right. So, 2, 1, 3, 1 is a submatrix. Similarly, 1, 2, 2, 3 is a submatrix. 2, 3, 6, 7 is also a submatrix. Okay. So, this is submatrix of order 2. And determinant, can you know, determinant is not equal to 0. Okay. Similarly, here we are having 4 rows and 3 columns, right. So, either not a submatrix or the highest order of Patona. We can able to write order three. So three or three by three matrix, we can write it as 
so then determinant value can be getting it as a new not equal to zero over the but rank at the end of the end of the corona highest order of a non singular sub matrix is called a rank okay you can rank find the rank of a matrix so for three by three we know that to find the determinant a so first you have to find the determinant a if the determinant a is not equal to zero then the rank of a matrix is three equal to the order right if suppose the determinant a for a three by three matrix equal to zero then uh, you find the uh, determinant of a sub matrix okay so the order of a matrix if, if we are able to find any one of the at least one of the sub matrix of order two determinant value not equal to zero means then the order two is a rank of a given matrix okay so in this example uh, the, the determinant of a given problem a is three uh, now which is 181 which is not equal to zero therefore directly we write it as rank of a matrix equal to three okay then similarly find the rank of a matrix this matrix is a four by four matrix four rows and four columns are given so first you have to consider any uh, sub matrix of elements uh, that's the one process right so the, the, the maximum order is uh, if suppose for a given rectangular matrix this is this is a square matrix in case if the given map if the matrix uh, given is in a rectangular form okay number of rows are not equal to number of columns means uh, you have to consider the um uh, any sub matrix with the square with the same order that is any two by two order or three by three matrix okay pa? so here uh, they are given as a uh, row mat uh, row matrix sorry square matrix only but order is four four by four Mm, yeah, but we didn't study uh, how to find the determinant of A. Okay, so by uh, the, uh, then the next method is reduce the given matrix to its echelon form, right? What is meant by echelon form? Echelon form means that you have to uh, uh, change the number in the in the rows uh, corresponding to the first element. A one one is clear. In the corresponding column, uh, you have to make zero. Okay, then uh, the, similarly, uh, echelon form being the last role, uh, the last element matuna irkono. Remaining elements become zero. Uh, you have to make the remaining elements are zero. Then that form is called the echelon form. A pre echelon form and the last element namalika zero angla abina, then that uh, rank of a matrix is four. Is it okay, students? Rank of a matrix is a repeated question for the gate exam. Mm, if you are seeing any question paper, they ask one question to find rank. Do you have any doubt or is it clear? Students, please reply. Hello, there is no response here. Hello, is anybody there? Hello, ma. Right, okay. Now listen. So finding rank of a matrix is important so here the rank uh, given form is in a four by four matrix then uh, we are uh, we change reduce this matrix so it's like echelon form right ma so applying the row operation so first uh, r2 there is no change because uh, the r2 element the first element in the second row is zero so we keep as it is but the first element in the third row is four so using r1 R3 will R3 equal to R3 minus 4 R1. So 4 minus 4 into 1, 4 minus 4, 0. Similarly, uh, this fourth row, first element is 3. So applying R4 equal to R4 minus 3 R1. So that element is 0. 
okay so uh, uh, if you apply the um, row uh, formula means uh, it is applicable for each and every element in that row right so r3 equal to r3 minus 4 r r1 means uh, the first element will become 0 the second element 2 minus 8 right 2 minus 16 so that, that is minus 14 then 3 minus uh, 32 so minus 29 then 1 minus 28 minus 27 okay then the third row uh, fourth row r4 minus 3 r1 so 1 3 minus 3 is 0 12 minus 12 0 24 minus 24 0 2 minus um, yeah, 21 which is equal to minus 19 okay so in this minus 19 our echelon uh, this matrix is reduced the last row will become in the echelon form right but in the uh, third row we are having minus 14 so you have to reduce that minus 14 that is a uh, triangular matrix form that is called our echelon form right ma so this mind you have to change this minus 14 to 0 okay so now apply the rule r2 and r3 okay just interchanging r2 and r3 just in the, because in r2 we are having the second element as zero so we are just interchanging r2 and r3 um, then we get our required echelon form so this last element okay the last element is not equal to zero therefore rank of a given matrix is four if suppose uh, the last element is 0, then the rank of a matrix not equal to 4. Okay, it may be 3 or maybe 2, right? Then you have to take any submatrix, any submatrix of order 3 by 3, then find the determinant value. Based on that value, you decide the rank of a matrix is either 3 or 4. Okay, pa? then now inverse of a matrix. So, finding already we uh, see the nodes uh, inverse of a matrix, they given uh, uh, options, right? Then, how can we find inverse? We know the formula adjoint A by determinant A. So, now de finding determinant, determinant as putting plus minus plus in the top of the first row. So, plus 1 into find leave a first row and first column, find the val determinant value. Then minus of minus 1 will become plus 1, right? Pa? Into leave the second row and first sec, first row and second column. Then the determinant of 1, 1, 0, 1, we get 1. Similarly, plus third element is 0 into something, it will become 0. So the determinant of yes equal to 2, not equal to 0. Next, find adjoint yes. That is adjoint yes means find the cofactor. Okay, cofactor means taking the minor of each and every element, right? With the sign minus i minus 1 power i plus j. And the position put cofactor can be by determinant a value put on this is the inverse of a matrix. Okay, then reduce the matrix into echelon form and hence find the rank. Okay, so already we've seen one example. This is the second example. So the first row is 1, 2, 3. So, you just keep as it is. So, consider the second row. So, you have to reduce the 2 as 0. In um, update panana, R2 equal to R2 minus 2 R1. Okay. Since R1 or the first element 1, R2 equal to R2 minus 2 R1. Similarly, R3 or the first element 3. So, R3 equal to R3 minus 3 R1. Okay. Pa. Similarly, the fourth row order first element is 6 so r4 equal to r4 minus 6 r1 and then we get the corresponding elements three elements are zero okay so uh, uh, for the for the same operation the elements other elements also gets changed is it clear then ap again applying first in the element in the in this minus 4 in the fourth row second element will be we wants to be zero. Padak Munadi in a pandranga. Second row but a second element zero or the just interchange panikranga. Third row convert panikranga. Okay. So R2, R3 interchanged. So we get one zero zero on the che. Ipanamalika minus four and this minus eleven should be equal to zero. Other change pananam. Other change panda there. Ipanga at the element la operate pandra. R4 equal to R4 minus R2. 
so we get second element zero adhe mari third element zero adutha operate pandra third element also equal to zero so in this case if you apply the operation r4 equal to r4 minus r3 we get the fourth element also equal to zero is it clear okay so if in the element to zero i h of dina our rank should not be equal to four right pa so it is a lower order upper lower order when we actually class three so the rank is three is it clear for a four by four rank of a four by four matrix then now linear the given vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent okay this is based on finding the determinant value so in the based on determinant value first in a full row singular non-singular then consistent inconsistent then for a vector space the given vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent okay if the vectors are linearly dependent then determinant a equal to zero not equal to zero means linearly independent uh, uh, you just make it notes right pa singular means determinant a equal to zero similarly dependent means linearly dependent means determinant a equal to zero then uh, consistency in consistent means determinant a equal to zero okay similarly non singular independent linearly independent and inconsistent that means determinant not equal to zero so given the vectors uh, verify the vectors given vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent then you have to just verify the determinant value of a given coefficients then if the determinant value not equal to zero then it is linearly independent okay but now next augmented matrix augmented matrix means already you start i think that you study your numerical analysis so this mat this linear system of linear equations this x plus y plus z equal to 4 and 2x plus 5y minus 2z equal to 3 x plus 7y minus 7z equal to 5 this can be written as the matters 1 1 1 2 5 minus 2 1 7 minus 7 into x y z equal to the right hand side element 4 3 5 okay so that the representation is a x equal to b okay but augmented matrix is a by b that is the matrix a by b the fourth element fourth row right hand side fourth column right hand side the element this kind of matrix is called the augmented matrix okay so now the show that the equation are not consistent or not consistent means inconsistent again so let's open it the inconsistent being the system is not consistent and into the rank of a not equal to rank of a by b so this is one case based on rank in the result when the mother which is only off rank by base when you solar similarly the determinant value can be changed determinant value not equal to zero now not consistent at the end of solar okay so for finding a rank the given a system of linear equation can be written in a matrix form ax equal to b uh, in equation form ax equal to b so a is 1 1 1 that is x plus y plus z equal to 4 so this x plus y plus z just write the coefficient then from the second equation is 2 5 minus 2 and third equation is 1 7 minus 7 and mm, the element in the right hand side 4 3 5 okay so that is ax equal to b now consider the augmented matrix now apply the row operation right so uh, try to bring the matrix in an echelon form okay so we can see that rank of a by b non zero rows is 3 so applying the same row operation on a we get rank of a matrix is 2 right so the rank the system is not consistent okay so in a direct way uh, here they are given as system of linear equations so we we find the augmented matrix but no need to find the 
uh, verify whether the given system is consistent or inconsistent in the same method. This is not only this is the one. This is not the only method, right? Huh? You can uh, you can easily find the determinant value. Then also you can choose the answer. So the given from this, the given vectors are linearly dependent also, right? Now solving equation. Now solve the equation x plus y plus z equal to 9. Then you, I think um, uh, Kramer's rule is one of the method to solve the simultaneous linear equations, right? By system of linear equations, uh, the Kramer's rule. So from the Kramer's rule, uh, we find delta, del x, del y, del z. Then x equal to del x by delta y equal to delta y by delta and z equal to delta z by delta. So in that promise rule method also, we can easily find the value of x, y, z, system of three linear equations, three variables, right? A linear system of linear equations and three variables. Similarly, this augmented matrix method, we can easily find the solution, okay? So uh, uh, this is the method to solve the Earlier system of linear equations using the augmented matrix method. Matrix method. Mm -hmm. Now listen. First, we write the given equations in the matrix form a x equal to b. So uh, just fill the coefficient 1, 1, 1, 2, 5, 7, 2, 1, minus 1 into x, y, z equal to 9, 52, z. Okay, ba. So now uh, write the, here in this example, they are directly applying the row operation, but actually we, we just uh, write the augmented matrix. So how can you write the augmented matrix? This 1, 1, 1, 9, Z, 2, 5, 7, 52, 2, 1, minus 1, 0. Okay, now apply the row. A row form, row operation. That is, uh, you try to bring the augmented matrix in the echelon form, right, ma'am? So you make the elements in the second row, first element, third row, first element will become zero. So applying the row operation, R2 equal to two, uh, R2 minus 2 R1. Similarly, R3 equal to R3 minus 2 R1. We get the skeleton matrix as 1, 1, 1, 9, 0, 3, 5, 34. 0, minus 1, minus 3, minus 80. Again, we, uh, you, you have to reduce this minus 1 to 0. So again, apply the uh, row operation using R2. Okay. First simplification using R1, first row. But after that, you have to use second row, right, ma? R2. Then R3 will become 3 R3 plus R2. We get the resultant matrix is 1, 1, 1, 9, 0, 3, 5, 34, 0, 0, minus 4, minus 20. So this is a upper triangular matrix, right, ma'am? So from this, directly you can equate it. This minus 4 is it equal to minus 20, okay? Minus 4 is it equal to minus 20. So from this, is it equal to 5, okay? Then from the second row, 3y plus 5 is that equal to 34, correct? 3y plus 5 is that equal to 34. Already you find is that equal to 5. So substituting for is that we get 34 minus 25 equal to 9. I mean 3y equal to 9. So y equal to 3. Then from the first row we get x plus y plus is that equal to 9. So already you find is that equal to 5 and y equal to 3. Substituting all those values, we get x equal to 1. Therefore, x equal to 1, 3, 5 is the solution. x equal to 1, y equal to 3, z equal to 5 is the solution. Is it clear? So solving system of equations using matrix method. Okay. Then, next. Now, already we uh, saw the problem. Right, ma'am? How to find the rank of a matrix? How to solve the linear system of linear equations? Here, there are some notes. Okay? So, just note it down. Rank of a matrix. 
So a matrix obtained by deleting some rows or columns are both of given matrix is called submatrix. I already informed, right? For a 3 by 3 matrix, we can write 2 by 2 as a submatrix. Okay. Similarly, minor of a matrix. This is also you know that the determinant of a square submatrix of the given matrix is called the minor of a matrix. So if the order of sub square submatrix is R, then its determinant is called minor of order R. Okay. Rank of a matrix. Let A be a M by N matrix. R is said to be rank of A if every R plus 1th order minor of A is 0. There exists at least one R order minor of A, which is not 0. Then A rank of A equal to O of A, which is mentioned by the symbol O of A, that is order of largest order of non-zero minor of A. Whether you understand the definition part, rank of A equal to the order of largest order of non-zero minor of A. Okay. So, uh, uh, I think everybody is clear about uh, finding rank, uh, rank of a matrix, whether it may be 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or 4 by 4, whatever may be. Right, ma? So, now, this is the result based on the rank of a matrix. So, rank of A plus B, which is not less than or equal to, just note it down, rank of A plus B, not equal to rho of A plus rho of B. Okay, pa? So, a rank of rho of A plus B, which is less than or equal to rho of A plus rho of B. Similarly, rho of A minus B, which is greater than or equal to rho of A minus rho of B. Okay, these two result is very important. Similarly, if rho of an M by N equal to N, okay, uh, but if and only if determinant A not equal to 0. In a solrangan purida, the column other or a rectangular matrix ayirida, M by N, if the given matrix is in a rectangular form. So rho of M by A, M by N, which is equal to N, which is equal to number of column, then if and only if determinant A is not equal to 0. Okay. Then rank of A and rank of A transpose both are equal and the result to null approach kunga. Rank of A plus B less than or equal to rank of A plus rank of B. Similarly, rank of A minus B is greater than or equal to rank of A minus rank of B and rank of A equal to rank of A transpose. Okay. Then now, 0 and non-zero row. If all the elements in a row of a matrix are 0, then it's called a uh, 0 row. Otherwise, it is called a non-zero row. For example, look at the example. The example of a uh, row, four, row 4, row 5 are completely 0. So, it's a row echelon form. Either one in so wrong, uh, 0 matrix. Right, pa? So, echelon form of a matrix. The matrix is said to be in echelon form if it has the following properties. Zero rows, if any, R below, R non-zero, any non-zero row. The first non-zero entry in each non-zero row is equal to 1. Okay. Then the number of zeros before the first non-zero element in the row is less than the number of such rows in the next row. Okay. Then linearly independent and linearly dependent of the vectors. So already uh, we saw the example. So linearly independent and linearly dependent. the definitions But the vectors are said to be linearly independent if determinant A not equal to 0, dependent if determinant A equal to 0. This is the most important. This is the formula. Right. This is the direct formula to find, uh, to check whether the given uh, vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent. Next, norm of a vector. So the vector, let x equal to a, b, c be a vector. Then the norm of a vector equal to the square root of, I mean, sum of the squares of the other square root of sum of the squares of the elements. Okay. Norm of a vector, norm x equal to root of a square plus b square plus c square. Okay. So if x equal to a, b, c, then the normalized vector. Hmm? Uh, it, uh, it, you studied in max 1, right? Ma? So, normalized vector. So, x by norm x. That is, 
a by root of a square plus b square plus c square, b by root of a square plus b square plus c square, and c by root of a square plus b square plus c square. Okay. So, for example, the matrix x equal to 1, 0, 2, then norm x equal to 2, 5. Square root of 1 square plus 0 plus 2 square. So, 1 plus 4 equal to root 5. Okay. Orthogonal vectors and orthonormal vectors. Two vectors x and y are said to be orthogonal if x transpose y equal to 0. So, this formula is important. Uh, keep in mind, two vectors x, y in R power n are said to be orthogonal if x transpose y equal to 0. So, for example, this is our x and this is our y. Whether you check these two vectors are orthogonal, then 1 minus 1, 0, that this is transpose y, right, ma'am? So, 1 minus 1, 1, we, if you find the value, product, find the value, it will become 0. Then, orthonormal vector. So, x and y are orthogonal, you know? Then norm x equal to 1 and norm y equal to 1. This is the condition for the given vectors to be orthonormal. Okay, pa? So orthonormal vectors are x and y are orthogonal and norm x equal to 1 and norm y equal to 1. Next, system of linear equations. This is we already studied. Um, where a equal to, this is the matrix form. a x equal to b and this a is a coefficient matrix, right? Pa? So for the system, a x equal to b, augmented matrix is denoted by a by b, right? Then, uh, the homogeneous system, a x equal to 0, non-homogeneous system, a x equal to b, okay? If the right-hand element, right-hand, uh, if you are um, having all the elements are 0, then the system of equation is said to be homogeneous, okay? Homogeneous means ax equal to 0. Generally, we can write it as the given system of linear equations in a uh, matrix form as ax equal to b. Okay. If b equal to 0, then the system of equation is said to be homogeneous. If uh, not equal to 0, that is ax equal to b is called a non-homogeneous system. Okay. Then consistent. If the system has at least one solution, then the system is called consistent. So, a consistent system is said to be determined determinant if it has unique solution. A consistent system is said to be indeterminate determinate if it has more than one solution. Okay. This is also important. Pa. System consistent at least one solution of the exist. So next inconsistent if the system has no solution then the system is said to be inconsistent. Okay. These three points are very important. Right. Next Method to solve non-homogeneous equation. So, Ax equal to B. There are two types, consistent and inconsistent. Consistent means uh, rank of A equal to rank of A by B. Similarly, inconsistent is rank of A not equal to rank of A by B. Unique solution exists. Rank of A equal to rank of B equal to R. Is in, uh, rank of A equal to rank of A by B, which is less than N. Even the infinitely many solution, which is equal to N, even the unique solution. Inconsistent, rank of A not equal to rank of A by B. Okay. So, you will know near path of final conclusion in the graph. Ta, the graph is the system of non-homogeneous linear equation te, Ax equal to B form. When the form the system may be consistent or inconsistent. So, consistent or irkanuna, what's the condition? Rank of A equal to rank of augmented matrix, right? Inconsistent means that rank of a matrix and rank of augmented matrix not equal, okay? Then, uh, if the system is consistent, then there are two types. That is unique solution or infinitely many solution. Unique solution, whenever, when it occurs, if rank of A equal to rank of A by B equal to number of rows, equal 3 by 3 na number order, right? Pa? So 3 by 3 na 3. Abdin the system has unique solution. 
3 illa which is less than 2 rank kandupidikkrom rank vandu less than 2 less than 3 a irundha then it has infinitely many solution okay so uh, for a either non homogeneous system idhe idhe homogeneous system for the homogeneous system a x equal to 0 x equal to 0 0 is called the trivial solution okay pa is called the trivial solution so non trivial solution abdin rade other solutions other non zero solutions are said to be non trivial solutions uh, you just notice the terms right pa what is trivial solution? What is non-trivial solution? Trivial solution for the homogeneous system. That means x equal to 0. Okay. Non-trivial means if x not equal to 0. Other than 0 elements solutions are called non-trivial solutions. Okay. Then next. Homogeneous system to solution method. So a x equal to 0. Uh, it, is, it may be a square matrix m equal to n or m not equal to n okay so if m means number of rows n means number of columns right ma so if m equal to n then it can be divided into two so rank of a equal to n or determinant a not equal to zero okay either rank or determinant a not equal to zero then only trivial solution exists so x equal to zero is the only solution right ma if m equal to n, then rank of a is less than n, then it has infinitely many non-trivial solutions. Okay, pa. So, then, it, this is for a square matrix. If I the rectangular matrix, I given the m not equal to n. Okay, then m less than n, that is, number of rows is less than number of columns. Number of columns is higher than, higher I the, it has infinitely uh, non-trivial solutions. If number of rows is greater than number of columns, then rank of A when the n is the only trivial solution. Rank of A is less than n is the infinitely many non-trivial solutions. M is number of equations and N is number of unknowns. So now null space of ax equal to 0, null space set of all solutions of ax equal to 0 is called the null space. So nullity, number of linearly independent solution of ax equal to 0, rank of a plus nullity of a equal to n. Okay. So it's number of unknowns, n is the number of unknowns. Now, for the following set of simultaneous equation. This is question asked in one year. For the following set of simultaneous equations, this 1.5x minus 0.5y plus z equal to 2, 4x plus 2y plus 3z equal to 9, 7x plus y plus 5z equal to 10. They are giving four, four options. The solution is unique. The equations are incompatible. Infinitely many solutions, finitely many solutions. Okay. So first you consider the augmented matrix A by B. Then this is our A by B. A is this 1.5 can be written as 3 by 2 and minus 0.5 can be written as minus 1 by 2. 1, 4, 2, 3, 7, 1, 5, 2, 9, 10. Now the augmented matrix is A by B. So by 2, 9, 10. Okay. Similarly, we have to apply the row operation by bringing the given a augmented matrix in an eclant form, right, ma? So this four, uh, you reduce this four as zero. Similarly, seven will to zero. So apply the corresponding row operations. We get zero, zero. Similarly, next you make this five by seven as zero. Okay, I think zero panito. But zero panambo de in that operation we get uh, automatically this one by four is also become zero. Okay. In the element 0, our rank should not be equal to 3. Then, rank of a matrix is fourth element not equal to 0. So, augmented matrix would have rank 3, but matrix A would have rank 1 to 2. Is it clear? Augmented matrix means it is a 3 row, 4 column. Right. So, in the fourth element not equal to 0. 
so augmented matrix oda rank vandu 3 but in the matrix oda a matrix oda rank vandu 2 since this a 3 3 0 try pa so rank a equal to rank, not equal to rank a by b so no solution and the equations are inconsistent no solution and the equations are inconsistent is it clear next step solve the following system of equations okay so now x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 3 x1 minus x3 equal to 0 x1 minus x2 plus x3 equal to 1 so whether the system having unique infinitely many no solution only one solution so we have to check similarly we are forming the augmented matrix a by b applying the row operations you try to bring down the matrix as echelon form same thing in like the above problem or rank of a as 2 rank of an augmented matrix a by b as 3 therefore rank not equal to a by b the solution does not exist is it clear now eigen values and eigen vectors let a be a n by n matrix the characteristic equation a, the determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0 this lambda is called the eigen value the characteristic root okay the root of the characteristic equation is called the eigen value then eigen vector a minus lambda i into x equal to 0 that is a x equal to lambda x okay pa now properties of eigen values and eigen vectors these all the properties are very important right now trace of a a equal to trace means sum of the diagonal elements so trace of a equal to sum of eigen values then determinant of a equal to product of eigen values if one of the eigen value is zero then determinant a equal to zero uh, uh, once again i repeat the same thing these properties of eigen values and eigen vectors are very important right ma if a is diagonal or an upper triangular or lower triangular then the diagonal elements of a matrix are the eigen values the way that is for the diagonal matrix the eigen values are the diagonal elements seriya the diagonal matrix or eigen values are the diagonal elements the eigen values of a and the a transpose or c if lambda is an eigen value of a and determinant a not equal to 0 then 1 by lambda is an eigen value of a inverse is it clear 1 by lambda is an eigen value of a inverse next lambda is an eigen value of a and determinant a not equal to 0 then determinant a by lambda is an eigen value of a joint a if lambda 1 lambda 2 etc lambda n are eigen values of a then the power lambda 1 power m lambda 2 power m etc lambda n power m or eigen values of a power m similarly lambda 1 plus r minus k power m etc are eigen values of a plus r minus k i power m if lambda is an eigen value of a and f of a is a polynomial in a then f of lambda is eigen value of f of a okay so uh, up to eighth property all the above eight properties are most important okay for doing problems these eight properties are most important right ma so now then haley hamilton theorem <coughs> so the statement for ch theorem the theorem is also called as ch theorem haley hamilton theorem is every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation okay so what is the use of ch theorem it is used to find the inverse of k similarly used to find the highest power of k calculate the integer powers of k that is a power n okay diagonal equation a matrix a is diagonalizable then if a is similar to a diagonal matrix that is there exists an invertible matrix p such that p inverse ap equal to d But D equal to diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements are eigen values of A and P columns of uh, P are eigen vectors of A and A is diagonalizable if and only if A has linearly independent eigen vectors. Then P inverse 
a p equal to d or otherwise a equal to p d p inverse okay so diagonalization of a matrix so for every square matrix can be diagonalized okay non singular matrix a irukona if determinant a not equal to 0 then every matrix every square matrix can be diagonalized okay pa so find the eigen values and the eigen vectors of the following matrix so take let us take the given matrix as a so a equal to 5 minus 2 0 minus 2 6 2 0 2 7 the characteristic equation is a my determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0 so a minus lambda i equal to 0 means the diagonal elements will become 5 minus lambda 6 minus lambda 7 minus lambda so you can find the determinant value <clears throat> then we get the quad cubic equation solving this cubic equation we get three roots eigenvalues are 3 6 9 this is one method okay second method is the characteristic equation is lambda cube minus s1 lambda square plus s2 lambda minus s3 equal to 0 the characteristic equation for a 3 by 3 matrix is lambda cube minus s1 lambda square plus s2 lambda minus s3 equal to 0 where s1 equal to sum of the diagonal elements principal diagonal elements s2 equal to sum of the minus of the diagonal elements i think you know the word minus right ma so sum of the minus of the diagonal elements then s3 equal to determinant a then you get directly you got the quadratic equation cubic equation solving that cubic equation we can easily find the value for eigenvalues so anyway for the given mat for the given matrix a for this matrix the eigenvalues are 3 6 9 then you have to find the eigenvector so consider each and every vector for each and every eigenvalue we get eigenvector right now eigenvector is a minus lambda i into x equal to 0 that x is said to be a eigenvector then a minus now uh, case 1 let us take lambda equal to 3 so a minus 3i into x equal to 0 so just subtract 3 from the diagonal elements alone right so 5 become 2 6 become 3 7 become 4 then 2 3 4 all the remaining elements are no change into x1 x3 x3 equal to 0 so directly you solve it or otherwise you row the any row operation or column operation that we write the uh, we can find the value for this x1 x2 x3 okay so this x1 solving we get x1 x2 x3 as minus 2 minus 2 minus plus 1 so this is the first eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 3 okay similarly for considering 6 uh, we get the matrix minus 1 minus 2 0 minus 2 0 2 0 2 1 to x1 plus x1 x2 x3 equal to 0 okay so here also you apply the row operation make the equation easily you can find the values for x2 and x3 okay so uh, equation form on the here our third element 3 3 by 3 3 3 element is 0 so you directly take x3 equal to some constant k then from uh, substituting x3 equal to k you can find the value for x1 and x2 so here we get the again vector for corresponding to the again value 6 is 2 minus 1 2 okay similarly applying the same procedure uh, taking 9 we get the eigen value as minus 1 2 2 so the corresponding i for for each and every eigen value we can find the eigen vectors right mark then use haley hamilton theorem to find the inverse of the matrix so if you've given a the matrix a equal to 1 2 3 2 minus 1 4 3 1 minus 1 then the characteristic equation of A is find the characteristic equation, solve the characteristic equation. Okay, 
there is no need to find the eigen value for ch theorem so for ch theorem you find the characteristic equation so what's the definition for ch theorem every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation okay you substitute uh, a instead of lambda then the characteristic equation will become a cube plus a square minus 18a minus 40i equal to 0. Okay. Now, multiplying with a inverse on both sides, we get a square plus a minus 18i equal to 40 a inverse. So, from this a inverse equal to 1 by 40 into a square plus a minus 18i. So, you have to find the value for a square a squared is a into a. Already a is 1, 2, 3, 2, minus 1, 4, 3, 1, minus 1. So if you multiply, we get the answer a squared as 14, 3, 8, 12, 9, minus 2, 2, 4, 14. Then substituting a squared a and i, i is the identity matrix. So 18i and simplifying, we get a inverse equal to 1 by 40 into minus 3, 5, 11, 14, minus 10, 2, 5, 5, minus 5. So using CH theorem, we can easily find the inverse of a matrix. Okay. So up to this, we are uh, uh, look at the some basic concepts and the important formulas in the topic linear algebra. So I think this is your first topic in the syllabus for engineering mathematics 1. So you have to go through the all the formulas, right, ma? So based on this, uh, let us move to the next topic. So next topic is calculus, limits, continuity, and differentiability. Okay, limit of a function. This is the definition for limit of a function. So right hand limit and left limit. Now let f be a function defined in a uh, directed neighborhood of A for every positive real number epsilon. There exists another positive real number delta such that modulus f of x minus l less than epsilon whenever 0 less than modulus x minus a less than delta. Then the function f of x is said to be tending to the limit l as x tends to a and it is denoted by limit x tends to a f of x equal to l. That is the literal meaning for the limit is if the give for the given function f of x, if x tends to some a, okay, if x tends to some value a, then the value of the function is limited to l. Okay, this is the meaning of limit x tends to a f of x equal to l. Then uh, f is, f be defined in a right neighborhood of a and it will be any real number, then it is said to be a right limit. Okay. Similarly, if f is defined on a left neighborhood of A, then the limit is said to be a left limit. Okay. Pa. Next. For these are all the standard formula. Okay. These are all the, the slide is most important, very important. Right, Ma? So, for all real values of N, limit extends to A x power n minus a power n by x minus a equal to n into a power n minus 1. Now limit extends to a x power m minus a power m by x power n minus a power n equal to m by n a power m minus n. If 0 less than mod x less than pi by 2 and x is measured in radians, the limit extends to 0. Okay, limit extends to 0 sin x by x equal to 1. Similarly, limit x tends to 0, tan x by x equal to 1. And limit x tends to 0, sin ax by x equal to a. Limit x tends to 0, tan ax by x equal to a. Limit x tends to 0, sin ax by tan bx equal to a by b. Okay, this uh, everything is very important. Limit extends to 0, sin x by x equal to 1. Similarly, limit extends to 0, tan x by x equal to 1. 
then if x is measured in degree same thing only sin x degree by x 0 equal to 1 okay then limit sin x tends to infinity now uh, I think you you notice the difference so the, the last slide limit x tends to 0 sin x by x equal to 1 okay pa? but limit x tends to infinity sin x by x equal to 0 similarly limit x tends to infinity cos x by x equal to 0 huh? then limit x tends to 0 sin inverse x by x equal to 1 limit x tends to 0 tan inverse x by x equal to 1 now limit x for the hyperbolic function the same result can be applicable for the hyperbolic and the inverse hyperbolic function also so limit x tends to 0 sin hx similarly tan hx the value equal to 1 and uh, limit x tends to 0 sin h inverse x by x similarly limit x tends to 0 tan h inverse x by x equal to 1 okay then limit x tends to infinity 1 plus a by x the whole power x limit x tends to infinity 1 plus a by x the whole power x equal to e power k limit x tends to infinity 1 plus a by x by the whole power x equal to e power a now limit x tends to 0 e power x minus 1 by x equal to 1 limit x tends to 0 a power x minus 1 by x equal to log a to the base e where a is positive okay students please notice all the formulas these formulas are very important now limit x tends to 0 a power x minus b power x by x equal to log a by b to the base e. Then limit x tends to 0. A power x minus 1 by b power x minus 1 equal to log a base b. Limit x tends to 0 mod x by x doesn't exist. Okay. Similarly, limit x tends to a mod x minus a by x minus a doesn't exist. Now, properties in limits. Limit x tends to a f of x. Limit x tends to a f of x equal to 0. If limit x tends to a modulus f of x equal to 0. If limit x tends to a f of x equal to L, then limit x tends to a modulus f of x equal to modulus L. If f of x equal to k, then limit x tends to a f of x equal to k. If x tends to a, f plus or minus g of x equal to limit x tends to a f of x plus or minus limit x tends to a g of x. Same thing for f by g also, but in this case, g of x must should not be equal to 0. Okay, Some constant into f of x equal to constant into that limit. Then x tends to a log of f of x equal to log limit x tends to a f of x. Okay. So, for 1 power infinity model, indeterminate form. Okay. Now, clearly notice that if limit x tends to a f of x equal to 1 and limit x tends to a g of x equal to infinity. Right, ma? Then, limit x tends to a f of x, the whole power g of x takes 1 power infinity. So, limit x tends to a f of x power g of x equal to e power limit x tends to a f of x minus 1 into g of x. This indeterminate form is the value looking like 0 by 0, infinity by infinity, infinity minus infinity, 0 into infinity, 0 power 0, infinity power 0. 1 power infinity. All those forms are called the indeterminate form. Right, ma? So, if you are finding the limits, uh, if you occurred in this indeterminate form, then we are not able to find the limit of the function directly by direct method. Okay. So, the uh, are you clear? The indeterminate forms are 0 by 0, infinity by infinity, infinity minus infinity, 0 into infinity, 0 power 0 and infinity power 0, 1 power infinity are called indeterminate forms. 
then you then we apply the l hospital rule okay if you if we apply the limit for the given function directly if the given value the return value is an indeterminate form is <clears throat> you have to find the limit of a function uh, using l hospital rule so l hospital rule is just a differentiating numerator and denominator right pa so limit extends to a f of x by g of x equal to limit extends to a f dash of x by g dash of x similarly if x extends to a f dash of x by g dash of x also in determinant form okay then once again you differentiate f double dash of x and triple dash of x if the second value is also indeterminate means uh, then we proceed up to till a finite limit is obtained so this rule is called our l hospital rule okay then now consider one example limit extends to 0 x into e power x minus 1 Plus two cos x minus one by x into one minus cos x. Okay, pa. So if we directly apply uh, zero for x, we get zero into e power zero minus one. Correct? E power zero value is one. So zero into one minus one. First term zero. Second term two into cos zero minus one. Cos zero value one. One minus one again zero. So numerator zero. Similarly, denominator also zero. So we get zero by zero that is in determinant form. Um, then we apply the L hospital rule. For L hospital rule, just uh, differentiating the numerator. Similarly, differentiating the denominator. Right, ma? So in the numerator, we are having x into e power x minus one. So differentiate using uh, product rule. U da u dash v plus u v dash. So, if we differentiate x, we get one into u dash into v e power x minus one plus x into. If we differentiate e power x minus one, we get e power x minus. I mean plus two into differentiating cos x, we get minus sin x. So they return as minus two sin x. Then constant term is zero. Dina, if we differentiating denominator, apply the product rule. Differentiating x, we get one one minus cos x plus x into if we differentiating cos x we get minus sin x already we are having minus so x into sin x now apply the limit then it also become an indeterminant form zero by zero so again uh, using l hospital rule differentiating the numerator as well as the denominator so if we differentiating the numerator term e power x plus e power x plus x e power x minus two cos x Sin x plus sin x plus x cos x. Applying the limit again zero by zero. Once again apply the L hospital rule. Again differentiating e power x plus e power x plus x e power x minus plus two sin x by cos x plus cos x plus cos x minus x sin x. Applying the limit as x equal to zero. The value equal to one. So finally. We got the value. Okay, pa. Next, continuation, continuity. Your function f is said to be continuous at x equal to a if limit extends to a f of x equal to a f of a. So literally, you just keep in mind continuous means limit exists. If the limit exists and the existing limit is finite, then the given function is continuous. Otherwise, it is discontinuous. Right, pa. So a function f of x is said to be continuous, right? Limit exists, and f of x and g of x are continuous. Then f of x plus plus r minus g of x, f into g, f by g are all all everything continuous. I think every fun con constant function is continuous. The identity function is continuous on r. Every polynomial function is continuous on r. The functions. Sin x, cos x are continuous. The function tan x, secant x are continuous. Continuous within this region. So you must notice the region also. Okay, tan x and secant x are continuous on R minus two n plus one into pi by two, where n is any integer. Then functions cot x into cos secant x are continuous in R minus n pi, where n is n in any integer. Add the differentiation. 
So f is differentiable if uh, limit extends to c, f of x minus f of c by x minus c exists. So differentiable are the this limit value exists now, then the function is said to be differentiable. Okay. And this is no need to keep in mind. Now look at the product rule. So uh, using this product rule only, we solve the previous problem. So uh, you know the formula d of uv. Here the function is f of x into g of x instead of uv. Okay. So g of x v into u dash plus u into v dash. This is the formula. Similarly, um, for uh, three differential function, u, v, w. Uh, u, v, w means uh, keep uh, v, w as uh, constant, u dash. So, u dash, v, w plus u, v dash, w plus u, v, w dash. Okay. This is our product rule. Then chain rule. Chain rule is function of a function. Okay. If y is a differentiable function of t and t is a function of x, then y equal to f of t and t equal to g of x, then dy by dx equal to dy by dt into dt by dx. So applying this chain rule only, we can differentiate sine 2x, sine 3x, right? Sine ax. Apply this chain rule. Now, so you, you should notice all the three results. Result one, every differentiable function is continuous. Every continuous function need not be differentiable. Okay, the converse is not true. Okay. Is it clear? Every continuous function, every differentiable function is continuous. Every continuous function need not be differentiable. If a function is not continuous, then not differentiable. Okay, pa. not continuous means not differentiable. Then the function is an example. The function f of x modulus x plus 1 on the interval minus 2 comma 0. Whether this function is continuous, differentiable, answer k So, modulus x plus a is continuous everywhere, but it is differentiable everywhere except x equal to minus a. So, modulus is not differentiable. So, uh, you just keep in mind this mod x and uh, the function with the modulus, the modulus x is continuous but not differentiable not particularly for x x plus a x minus a whatever may be the mode x is not differentiable okay pa? Uh, because uh, for the modulus function there is no limit uh, there is no unique limit i'm am i right so the limit of x is either plus one or minus one okay so limit doesn't exist for the modulus function so modulus function if the power given function is modulus then it is not differentiable no mean value theorem, rules theorem. So rules theorem, we are having three conditions, right, ma? So if, let f of x be a function such that the f, f should be continuous on closed interval a, b, and f is differentiable in open interval a, b, and f of a equal to f of b, then there exists at least one point c in a, b such that f dash of c equal to zero. Okay. The, this is the definition for rules theorem. So rules uh, uh, rules theorem. First condition, f of x is continuous. Second function, differentiable. Third function, f of a equal to f of b. That is for the given interval, right now. Then fourth fourth value, there exists at least one point c within the limit such that f dash of c equal to zero. Okay, then. Uh, for verifying rules theorem, you directly write the first condition. Every polynomial is continuous. Right, Pa? Every polynomial function. That polynomial means uh, the given function is in equation form. x squared plus x plus 2. Just x plus 1, x plus a, whatever may be. So every polynomial is continuous. So the first, continu first condition obviously true. So it is continuous on closed interval a, b. Then... Uh, you check whether the given function is differentiable or not. Differentiable means uh, you just uh, whether the derivative exists or not. You check whether the derivative exists or not. Third condition is f of a equal to f of b. And you have to cho choose any one element c such that f dash of c equal to 0. Then verify rules theorem for the function f of x equal to x minus a the whole power m. 
x minus b the whole power n where m comma n are positive integers in the closed interval a comma b since every polynomial is continuous for all values f of x is also continuous in a b right because you directly write the first statement every polynomial is continuous so f is continuous and then f of x equal to x minus a the whole power m x minus b the whole power n you find the derivative f dash of x so applying the formula uv method right x minus a the whole power m differentiate panna m into x minus a the whole power m minus 1 into x minus b the whole power n plus x minus a the whole power m into n into x minus b the whole power n minus 1 then so uh, just uh, the, the derivative exists in the open interval a b alone only so derivative it is differentiable then f of a 0 f of b 0 just find the value for f of a putting x equal to a this is 0 similarly putting x equal to b equal to 0 so f of a equal to f of b over all the three conditions we check it. Then fourth one, you have to find one c within this limit such that f dash of c equal to zero. So for this, so you uh, you take one uh, c and substituting this value, find the value of c in the numerical problem. For the numerical problem, you find the numerical value. Then uh, you have to verify that value of c is lies between the interval. Okay, otherwise, if the if all the three conditions are verified, then Rhodes theorem is verified. Okay, this is Rhodes theorem. Then Lagrange's mean value theorem. The first two conditions are same. It is continuous on closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b. Then there exists one element such that for Rhodes theorem, this, that is f dash of c equal to zero. But in mean value theorem, f dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a. Okay. f of b minus f of a by b minus a. So, by using Lagrange's mean value theorem, this minimum f dash of x is less than or equal to f dash of c less than or equal to maximum f dash of x. Okay. The point to Nabaguchikonga. So, minimum f dash of x less than or equal to f dash of c which is less than or equal to maximum f dash of x, where a less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b. Okay, now verify Lagrange's mean value theorem for the function f of x equal to log x in the interval 1 comma e. Given f of x equal to log x, so log x is differentiable continuous in the closed interval a, b, and it is also differentiable. Log x sort of formula, if we're differentiating log x, we get 1 by x. So, uh, it is di di uh, differentiable in open interval a, b. Lagrange's mean value theorem is applicable. Now, by this theorem, there exists a point c in open interval a, b, such that uh, 1 comma e such that f dash of x. So, f dash of x, what's the formula? Pa? f of b minus f of a by b minus a. Okay, then f of e minus f of 1 by e minus 1. Log e, log e as 1 minus log 1, 0 divided by e minus 1. So, we get 1 by e minus 1. Apa f dash of c equal to 1 by e minus 1. Therefore, c equal to e minus 1. Now, e minus 1 is in the interval 1 comma e. Hence, Lagrange's mean value theorem is verified. Okay. How can you find C equal to E minus 1? So, if you're integrating, this F dash of C is 1 by E minus 1. Okay. If you're integrating, F, F, we get we get what? f dash of c means 1 by c. So, 1 by c equal to 1 by e minus 1. Therefore, c is equal to e minus 1. Now, Cauchy's mean value theorem. So, Rolle's theorem, Lagrange's mean value theorem. Third one is Cauchy's mean value theorem. So, uh, this Cauchy's mean value theorem definition is if f from the closed interval a, b to r and g from a, b to r such that 
f comma g are continuous on a close interval ab f comma g are differentiable on open interval ab and g dash of x not equal to 0 for all x in ab then there exists c in ab such that f of b minus f of a by g of b minus g of a equal to f dash of c by g dash of c okay you should keep in mind all the definitions and the rules of uh, naming theorem right pa so rules theorem mean lagrange's mean value theorem and cauchy's mean value theorem so by all the three theorems the first two points are same okay the given f is continuous in closed interval ab f is differentiable in open interval ab for cauchy's mean value theorem we are having two functions f and g so the uh, the conditions applied for both the function f and g are uh, continuous f and g are differentiable okay pa then here the third condition is different uh, lagrange's mean value the first role theorem that is f of a equal to f of b okay but mean value theorem lagrange's mean value theorem there exists an element c such that f dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a right then here uh, there exists c such that f of b minus f of a by g of b minus g of a which is equal to f dash of c by g dash of c one with the condition g dash not equal to zero for all x in a comma b okay pa so this is one example find c of cauchy's mean value theorem on closed interval a comma b for f of x equal to e power x g of x equal to e power minus x so al uh, already we know that every polynomial is continuous so f and g are continuous and e if we differentiate e power x we get e power x and e power minus x is minus e power minus x derivative exists so it is differentiable right first two conditions over then what about the third condition then we get f and g continuous now namalukku enna varum g dash of x g dash of x is minus e power minus x that is also not equal to zero okay so we can apply the formula the answer is actually incomplete right anyway okay then uh, f of b minus f of a this f of x equal to e power x right pa so e power b minus e power a divided by e power minus b minus e power minus a which is equal to f dash of c means e power c by g dash of g c means minus e power minus c okay this my e power minus c if we bring to the numerator we get e power c into e power c so e power 2 c it will become so cancelling taking antilog on both side we get we can easily find the value of c now taylor series expansion of f of x about x equal to a this is a formula so f of x equal to f of a plus x minus a into f dash of a plus x minus a the whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of a plus etc is called taylor series expansion of f of x about x equal to a okay then maclaurin series expansion if x equal to 0 taylor series uh, is expanded at the point x equal to 0 then taylor series is said to be maclaurin series okay pa so maclaurin series expansion of f of x is f of x equal to f of 0 plus x into f dash of 0 plus x squared by 2 factorial into f double dash of 0 plus etc okay now some standard expansion you uh, you directly uh, look all these expansions as formulas right ma the cos x 1 minus x squared by 2 factorial plus x power 4 by 4 factorial plus x power 6 by 6 factorial plus etc. For sin x, x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial minus x power 7 by 7 factorial plus etc. For e power x, 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 4 by 5 factorial plus etc. Log 1 plus x, x minus x squared by 2 plus x cube by 3 minus x power 4 by 4 plus etc. Alternative plus minus, right? Ma? Log of 1 minus x, then minus x minus x squared by 2 
minus x cube by 3, everything minus. So minus x power 4 by 4, etc. Then 1 plus x, the whole power minus 1. 1 minus x plus x square minus x cube plus x power 4. 1 minus x, the whole power minus 1. 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus etc. 1 plus x, the whole power minus 2. 1 minus 2x plus 3x square minus 4x cube plus etc. 1 minus x, the whole power minus 2. 1 plus 2x plus 3x square plus 4x cube plus etc. Then the whole power 3. 1 plus power minus 3. 1 minus 3x plus 6x square minus 10x cube plus etc. 1 minus x, the whole cube. Right, pa? This is the formula. 1 plus 3x plus 6x square plus <coughs> 10x cube plus etc. Now look at one more problem. The third term in the Taylor series expansion of e power x about a would be what's the answer? Right, pa? So you have to find the Taylor series expansion of e power x at x equal to a. You know the formula, right? Taylor series expansion is f of x equal to f of a plus x minus a f dash of a plus x minus a the whole squared by 2 factorial f double, double dash of a plus etc. Here f of x is e power x. If we differentiating e power x, you get e power x. So f of a as e power a. f dash of a, e power a. f double dash of a, e power a. So they are, find, they are asked to find the third term. Then the third term is x minus a, the whole squared by 2 factorial into e power a. <coughs> then, limit of the following series as is x approaches pi by 2 is f of x equal to x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial plus etc. Okay. What is the series? x minus x cube by 3 factorial. The series is our expansion pa. This is sin x. Is it clear? So sin x expansion is x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial minus x power 7 by 7 factorial, etc. So this problem, this is f of x equal to sin x. Is it clear? So now limiting the limiting approaches sin x at x equal to pi by 2 is 1. So sin pi by 2 equal to 1. So the answer is 1. Okay. Then. Taylor's expansion of sin x in power of x minus pi by 4. x minus pi by 4 means you have to take, consider a as pi by 4. Okay. a equal to pi by 4. Now, f of x equal to f of a plus x minus a. Then I'm load a formula. So, f dash of x is sin x differentiating you get cos x. Cos x differentiating you get minus sin x. Minus sin x minus cos x. F power 4 on the sin x. Find the corresponding value at x equal to pi by 4. 45 degree. So sin 40, 45 1 by root 2. Cos 45 1 by root 2. Minus 1 by root 2. Minus 1 by root 2. Now substituting all those values in the formula. We get the expansion for sin x. Okay. Then definite and improper integral. So now definite integral, integral in f of x dx equal to capital F of x. This is our notation right there. So for the definite integral, integral a to b f of x dx equal to f of b minus f of a. If the limits are the same, a to a, then the integral value equal to 0. Okay. Then integral a to b f of x dx equal to integral a to b f of y dy, f of t dt, whatever the variable, both are equal. Fourth one is important. Integral a to b f of x dx equal to minus integral b to a f of x dx. Okay. Minus integral b to a f of x dx. Then a to b f of x dx. This can be split up into a to c plus c to b. Okay. Then a to b is in finite number of intervals to sum of finite integrals add panikla. Then integral 0 to a f of x dx this also equal to integral 0 to a by 2 and integral 0 to a by 2. This is f of x. This is f of a minus x. It's clear. 
Now integral 0 to a f of x dx equal to integral 0 to a f of a minus x dx. Please look at all the formulas. Hmm? Just a differentiation. Now uh, for the periodic function, integral 0 to n t f of x dx equal to n into integral 0 to t f of x dx n in capital n. Okay, pa. Next. Then next, these are all the formula based on periodic function, right? So now this is i n mm, integral 0 to pi by 2 sin power n x dx. Uh, similarly, this is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 cos power n x dx. So for both sin and cos, integral 0 to pi by 2 sin power n x dx and cos power n x dx both are equal to n minus 1 by n, n minus 3 by n minus 2, etc. 1 by 2 pi by 2 if n is even which is equal to 2 by 3 n and if n is odd. Okay, the formula number 24 is important. Okay, note it down. Then similarly, integral 0 to for pi by 4, tan power nx plus tan power n minus 2 x dx, which is equal to 1 by n minus 1. Okay. Now, what is the value of integral 0 to infinity e power minus y cube y power 1 by 2 dy? This is uh, given limit is 0 to infinity, right? So the value is a power minus y cube y power 1 by 2 dy. So for substituting by substitution method, we have to evaluate the given integrals. So put y cube equal to t. So 3y square dy equal to dt. From this y root y, right? y squared uh, equal to 1 by 3 dt correct y squared dy so root uh, y power 1 by 2 means y power 1 by 3 y power minus 3 by 2 if a 1 by 3 t power minus 1 by 2 dt so substituting we get the value 1 by 3 root pi now this is some standard results okay you just note all those results integral a to b root of x minus a by b minus x dx equal to pi by 2 into b minus a. Students, please note, uh, take the notes or otherwise I share the PPT, right? These are all, all the formulas. So you directly uh, write from the formula itself. No need to solve the given question, right, ma? Integral a to b root of x minus a by b minus x into dx equal to pi by 2 into b minus a. Then integral a to b 1 by root of x minus a into b minus x dx equal to pi. And uh, f of sin x by f of sin x plus f of cos x dx equal to pi by 4. Similarly, tan x and cortex also equal to pi by 4. But the limit you, you should uh, uh, keep kept in mind, the limit is 0 to 90 degree in the first quadrant, right? Then similarly, These are all the formulas in the definite integrals, right, ma? So generally, we didn't study in our uh, first semester integral calculus syllabus. Uh, these are all the advanced topics, advanced formulas in integration. But based on this integrals only, based on this formula only, they ask question in your uh, exam. So integral 0 to pi by 2 log tan x equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 log cortex equal to 0. Log sin x and log cos x equal to minus pi by 2 log 2. Okay. Uh, this is a direct formula. Directly, you, you may write the answers. Then, integral 0 to n, x dx equal to n into n minus 1 by 2. Integral 0 to n square root x dx equal to n into n minus 1. 4n plus 1 divided by 6 for all n in n. So in calculus, students define the integral a to b. Okay, that is called a definite integral uh, over a finite interval a b. The function f was assumed to be continuous or at least bounded. 
otherwise the integral was not guaranteed to exist so assuming an anti derivative of f could be found so integral a to b f of x dx always existed and was a number in the section we investigate what happens when these conditions are not met then that integral is called the improper integral okay so an improper integral means the limit is not finite then as well as the given function is not continuous So improper integrals, example, integral 0 to infinity, e power minus x dx is an improper integral. Then integral 0 to 1, dx by x is also an improper integral because here 0 to 1 is a finite limit, but the function 1 by x is not continuous, right, ma'am? Then integral 0 to infinity, dx by x minus 1 is an improper integral um, uh, because the limit is infinite, right? These are all the some examples for improper integrals. Now consider the following integral limit a tends to infinity 1 by a x power minus 4 dx. Okay, whether it may be converges or diverges. So a tends to infinity means 1 to infinity. So limit a tends to infinity if we integrate x power minus 4 we get x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 formula. So x power minus 3 by minus 3 between the limit 1 to a. So we get 1 by a cube minus 1. So 1 by, if a tends to infinity, 1 by infinity will become 0. So minus 1 by 3 into minus 1, we get 1 by 3. So anyway, uh, the finite limit exists. Therefore, uh, it is converges. Okay. The given value is converges. Then, find the integral 1 to infinity dx by x square. So it is an improper integral. So improper integral, we can uh, solve the formula x, power, x square, right? So if you uh, shift to the numerator, that is x power minus 2. So x power n plus 1 by n plus 1. Then applying the limit, we get 1 minus 1 by t. So applying the limit, we get value 1. Then the value is finite. Therefore, this function is converges. Right, ma? So, this is application of integrals. So, application of integrals, it's length. This is a line integral, single integral. This is length. And um, finding the area, that is for double integral. And finding the volume for triple integration. Right? For three coordinate, multiple integral. So application of single integral, the single integral is called the line integral, double integral is called the area, then triple integral is called the volume integral. Okay, so we can see this topic in the next class uh, and uh, let us see the other topics also. All right, ma? Okay. Thank you, students. See you in the next class. Thank you.